afternoon, Chelmsford. How are we all? Yes. Good. Are you still awake? Good stuff. Uh, my name is Nick Crown. I've been a magician and mind reader for professionally for 18 years. Uh, most of my weeks are spent uh, attending various different functions from various different walks of life. Uh, I may be at a private dinner party for eight people in Mayfair for some guy that's on the Financial Times rich list. Uh, I could be flown to Saint-Tropez to entertain for half an hour on someone's yacht. Or I could be at Dave's 18th birthday party at the Working Man's in Romford. So I really do get to see lots of different people from lots of walks of life. Um, and they've all got one thing in common. Um, I can make them all, hopefully, react like this. Um, it's really interesting looking back at these photographs. Uh, the kind of emotion on these people's faces as I'm performing just a, a magic trick. Um, and this next one makes me, uh, makes me laugh, actually. So if you look at the lady in the red dress, I, I mean, literally her eyes are nearly popping out of her head. I'm bending a fork, uh, a la, uh, uh, Uri Geller. Um, but the lady behind in the silver dress, I zoomed in on her, she almost, <laughs> almost looks a little bit disgusted with me for some reason. I don't know why, but in her own way, she's, she's appreciating the magic, she's enjoying it in her own way, I'm sure, and I think she was, uh, she was suitably impressed. Now, I've not always got been able to get these reactions. When I first started performing magic, I was able to do the tricks, uh, and people enjoyed them, but it wasn't until I'd been performing for quite a few years that I realised that it was the subtle things that I do and say which helped me get these kind of reactions. Um, and the main thing that I worked out is I, I need people first and foremost to like me before I do anything. Quite often I'm performing at a table and I'm approaching a table. People are judging me before I've even done a trick. So it's the way I introduce myself, the way I hold myself. Um, I've seen some magicians, they'll approach a table and they've got a deck of cards and they're doing these flash cuts, which is all really talented and it's really skillful stuff, half of which I can't even do myself, all right? But do you care at that point? It's a little bit show of it. In my opinion, you, you're getting off on the wrong foot, all right? So you really need to make people like you first as a performer. And then that opens themselves up to react like this. Um, so, yeah, it's really interesting. And you need to make room for, in your performance, in my opinion, to interact with people. Because essentially, this is what I'm paid for. I'm, made to enter, I'm, I'm paid to entertain people, first and foremost. I just happen to be using magic as a way to do that. Um, so I think it's really important to listen to your audience. As I'm performing, someone might say something, and I need to acknowledge that. I can't just shrug it off and carry on with my rehearsed patter. I, I need to acknowledge that, that, and quite often, it's those moments that create the funny moments in the presentation. I've seen too many magicians, kind of, someone said something, and they just sort of shrug it off and carry on with their rehearsed patter because they haven't got room for movement, so I think that's really important. And now I choose my material really wisely. Um, so I am going to give you a quick demo of something that I do. I, I, I am a mind reader, half of you look really worried. Um, so I am going to ask someone to help me. Um, so I'm looking for particular types of people, people that are uh, kind of susceptible to suggestion, people that haven't been drinking any alcohol. Thank you for the house lights. Um, I want a gentleman for this one. So you look bored. What's your name in the front row? John. John, would you mind helping me, John? Can we give John a round of applause? Thank you so much. Thank Thanks, John. We haven't met before, have we? Good stuff. We haven't set anything up? No. Thank you, John. Um, and you may want to stand here with me. So we're going to play a quick game. There are six colours on this cube. Black, blue, green, red, white and yellow. John's going to choose a colour. He's going to place it face up on your palm and you're going to cover it. You do this on my back's turn, obviously. I want to be a terrible trick, right? <laughs> I'm going to try and influence and guess John's choices, right? We will do this three times. If I get any of them wrong, John gets 50 quid. Fair? All right? <laughs> Obviously, if I'm right, Johnny gives me 50 pounds, so that's completely fair. Um, all I ask, Johnny, is it's your decision. Don't listen to anybody else. I'm sure no one will be shouting out any options. And don't randomly roll it. Actually, go for one that pops into your head, okay? Most people choose yellow on the first go. All right? <laughs> so I'm going to look away. My back's turned. Any colour you like, John, let me know once it's covered. The one you want is face up. Have you done that? Yeah. Good, you went quiet there, I thought you legged it for a minute. Uh, if this has worked for 50 quid, John should have chosen, um, well, look at me for a second. Just want to double check this has worked, because I am being filmed. Um, yeah, you should have gone for green, face up. Is it green? Can I see? Fantastic, green one out of one, hold your applause. Right. On the second go, everybody tries to trick me, they'll choose green again. 
but John's an intelligent man. Right? I don't think he knows that's too obvious, right? So entirely up to you, John. Um, I'm going to turn right around. Let me know once you've done it. Don't do this randomly. I saw you uh, rolling it about there. Actually, consciously choose the colour. Let me know once you've done it. Yep. Done? Is it covered? Yep. Good. Okay, it's in your mind, say it to yourself over and over again. Uh, you know, like black, 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 black. Is it black? <laughs> Good. Can I see? There it is. Black, two out of two, right? But this time, I'm going to make it a bit more fair for John, right? You're going to roll it randomly, stop on the colour, but don't even look at it. So you won't even know yourself. So he's not actually consciously choosing it this time. So I can't be influencing him. Equally, I won't be able to read his body language because he won't know the colour, right? This has to be real magic. <laughs> Don't be honest, right? <laughs> so roll it randomly. Uh, do that for me now and just stop whenever you like and don't look at the colour. Have you done that, John? I have. Good. Okay, so if you were to guess out of black, blue, green, red, white and yellow, which one would you choose? Uh, red. Red. Good stuff. Uh, lady in the front row, what would you go for? Yellow, and you, sir? I get blue. Blue, and you? Uh, black. Black? Okay, we've got a few of them. And you, sir, say white, thanks. Okay, <laughs> so I, we haven't got much time here, so I'm going to spin my hand around. Just say stop whenever you like. Stop. Uh, so he's looking at his phone now. Uh, what colour did you say? Blue. Blue. Okay, so for 50p, uh, <laughs> no, 50 pounds says it's blue. Let's have a look. There it is, blue. Three out of three. Thank you for that applause. It's an interesting trick how we can be influenced by suggestion. Um, but I want you to compare that to what I'm about to do. Um, let's choose a lady here. Lady with the blonde hair on the end that's been tweeting and doing all sorts throughout the whole thing. Can I borrow you for this? Is that all right? Good stuff. What's your name? Allegra. Uh, sorry? Allegra. Allegra? Yeah. Lovely to meet you. Do you want to come up, Allegra? Give Allegra a round of applause. <laughs> Allegra, can you also confirm we haven't set this up? We've never met before. Lovely to meet you. Thank you for volunteering. Have you been hypnotised before? or No, I just went. I'm not going to. I just went to see her face. I'm being cruel. Uh, but Allegra, I want you to think of someone close to you, like a family member or someone like that. Get their name in your mind. This could be anybody in the world. Yeah, it could be a friend of mine. It's up to you. And I'm going to get Allegra to jot it down. Write it clearly, because we might show the audience at the end. Write it there on my business card, conveniently. All right, and then turn it face down. Do that, Allegra, while my back's turned again. Uh, let me know once you've done it. So just write it above the line, and then turn the card face down. Let me know once you've done that. Good. Okay, is it face down? And let's slide that away. Let's grab the card first, because if you're holding it, people think that maybe I can see. So I'm going to zip this back into my wallet. It also gives me a chance to see how Allegra is holding the pen. She's pointing it away. Nine times out of ten, I know you will probably say that's because you don't want to get it on your clothes, but nine times out of ten that indicates that you've gone with family rather than a friend. Am I right saying this is family? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. This is not blood family though, right? Okay. She's helping me. I can see it in her reactions already, okay? But this is a, a, a male close person to you, yes? This is a male. Think of one letter somewhere in his name. Don't say it. Um, somewhere maybe in the middle, because I don't want to guess the first one first, because that might give it away. So think of one letter. Okay, that's a T. Is there a, is there a T there? Yeah. Was it next to the one you were thinking of? Good, thank you, that happens a lot. Hear me say his name, don't move your lips. Is this your other half? Good, okay, lift up your chin for me. Hear me say his name over and over again, repeat it. Scream his name in your mind. I'm sure you screamed it before, but many times. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> for many reasons. Uh, just come on to the back there for me. Hear me say, oh, she's hating every minute of this. It's, a, uh, it's coming from here. This is a B or a P name, correct? Peter? Yes, there it is. Peter, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. 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 Thank you, Give Allegra a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Now, I want you to compare those two effects that I just performed for you. I mean, the first one was impressive, how I could influence someone just through suggestion. But they were just colours. Didn't mean much, right? Which one are you going to remember more? I can assure you that you will probably remember that I guess the, Peter, um, the, uh, the name Peter was your other half, right? Um, now, and we genuinely haven't set anything up, okay? Because she's going to remember that more because it means something to her. She's emotionally invested in the trick. It's not just a random colour. Now, I could have done the colour thing, but I could have maybe applied emotion to the colour and said, think of someone that makes you really angry and then choose a colour. And that would have been a different story. Um, and I think it's really important applying emotion to tricks to make it more memorable and, and, and more enjoyable. Now, this doesn't have to just be a, a mind reading trick. You can do this with a basic card trick. I mean, if I was to tell you that um, this box was given to me by my grandfather, 
genuinely, uh, I call him Papa, um, and this used to sit on his mantelpiece. And every Sunday lunch, he used to go over to his house and we'd have a Sunday roast, and he used to say to him, Papa, what's in that box? Never tell me, all right? He said, one day you, you will know, but you can't open it yet. And every Sunday, and it's been on for years, I'd ask him the same question, Papa, what's in that box? One day, my boy, one day, all right? Sadly, he passed away quite a few years ago now. Um, and my nana gave me this box, along with a letter that said the time has come to open the box. But before you do that, say a card. Right? Reading this letter, I think you might. Um, so if you just imagine that you were me, over, um, reading this letter now and being given this box, what card would, would you name? Try not to go for an obvious one, like a queen or an ace, because everybody tends to pick those. Seven of spades. Seven of spades. Brilliant. Did you have any others in mind? Or? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Seven of spades. I opened the box. There were two things in the box. There was a letter and a, a, a one deck of cards, my uh, granddad's old deck of cards. Okay? And I opened the note, and it literally said, follow your dreams, anything is possible. And I looked at the deck of cards and I thought, what is this about? And I opened them and I spread through them and they all looked very normal, okay? Until I got to one card that was face down. And it was the seven of spades. <laughs> Thank you, cheers. All right. So that, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It's not, is it a true story? It's not a true story, okay? I've been the truth. Some of it's true. Some of it's not, okay? My grandfather was the, the first person to get me in the magic, and this box never existed, okay? And it's probably a bit cheesy, the presentation. It's probably not one that I would do if I was booked to do a show, right? But I wanted to get my point across that you could take what's just a standard card trick and turn it into something a lot more memorable and meaningful by applying emotion to it. And I think you can apply this in all walks of life, in all different areas and different jobs. Uh, I used to sell magic tricks in Harrods and Hamlets um, when I first started out, and then I continued to sell them from my car boot because I wanted to work for myself. Um, but, and quite often I'd be able to sell lots of tricks because people would want to know the secret, so I'd all, almost just have to say, and if you buy the trick, you can learn step by step, it's really quick, and you'll be able to know how I just did that. And nine times out of ten they buy it anyway. But, when I applied emotion to it, and I'd say to a lady that I've just performed the trick to, Imagine your son's going to get this on Christmas Day. He'll be able to learn the trick straight away. It's really easy, step-by-step -step instructions. And then he'll be able to perform a, a magic show for the rest of your family on Christmas Day. I certainly sold a lot more um, when I applied that. So, um, yeah, making a, an emotional impact is, is key, in my opinion. Um, and I'm not saying take advantage of people's emotions. That's, we'll leave that to the psychics. Uh, don't, get me, don't get me started on psychic. That's another talk for another day. Um, but uh, there's a famous salesman and speaker called Zig Ziglar, and he said that people don't buy for logical reasons, they buy for emotional reasons. So I'm gonna leave you guys with one question. How can you use emotion to enhance what you do and to make you or your product or company more memorable? Guys, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. Cheers.